In this video, you're going to learn how to find reference angles. So we're going to talk about what exactly is a reference angle and how to find it in both radians as well as in degrees. So let's dive into this video. First of all, what exactly is a reference angle? Well, you probably learned how to draw angles in standard position, but if not, what you do is you start by drawing your initial ray. This is like where it initiates or starts. It's like a spinner. You would take that spinner and if you spin it this direction, counterclockwise, we say that's a positive angle. If you spin it this direction, that's clockwise, we say that's a negative angle. And just like a spinner, eventually it's going to stop or terminate. So say for example it terminates or stops right here, this is what we call our angle of rotation. But where the reference angle comes in is wherever that angle stops, okay, that terminal ray stops, you want to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis and your reference angle is going to be the angle that's in between the terminal ray where it terminates or stops and the x-axis. It's going to be an angle between 0 and 90 degrees if you're in degrees or 0 and pi over 2 if you're in radians. Now if you were to, let's say, stop somewhere over here, you would want to drop the perpendicular like this to the x-axis and here would be your reference angle. If you ended up over here in the fourth quadrant, you're going to want to drop your angle to the x-axis. Here's your reference angle. If you're just in the first quadrant, you drop it to the x-axis and there's your reference angle. So again, that reference angle is always going to be between 0 and 90 or 0 and pi over 2 if you're in radians. Now, some students, they like to have a little formula to help them along. And you can certainly do that. You can say, well, if I'm in the second quadrant, I just take pi, which is like 180 degrees, minus the angle, and that's going to give me the reference angle. If you're in the third quadrant, you take the angle, theta, minus pi, which remember pi is 180, and that's going to give you your reference angle. If you're in the fourth quadrant, you do 2 pi minus theta. That gives you your reference angle. And if you're just in the first quadrant, it's just going to be theta, your angle. So let's look at some examples here, and I'll show you how this works. So say, for example, 7 pi over 6. First thing you want to do is figure out where is 7 pi over 6. Well, we're going to start over here along our positive x-axis. And when it's an improper fraction like this, what I like to do is convert it into a mixed number. So I would say 6 goes into 7 once with 1 left over. So this is really like 1 and 1 sixth pi. So remember, pi is like 180 degrees. And then we go another 1 sixth of pi. So this would be like 2 pi, but we're going to go 1 sixth of the way. And that's our terminal ray right there. Then what we do is we always want to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, never to the y-axis. And we ask ourselves, what's that reference angle? Well, in this case, you can see we went 1 pi. Well, it's another 1 sixth of pi. So it's going to be 1 sixth pi. Or you can say pi over 6, because that's like understood to be a 1 in front of that pi there. And that's your reference angle. Now, you might be saying, Mario, why do they even call it a reference angle? Well, you could think of this as referring back to an angle in the first quadrant with a central angle of pi over 6, these two triangles are going to be congruent to one another, which means that the uh, side lengths are going to be the same. So we can use it to help us to find the values of uh, trig functions of common angles. And we'll talk about that when we get into the unit circle. I'll, I'll put a link at the end of this video uh, directing to one of my unit circle videos. But for right now, we're talking about how do we find that reference angle. So let's look at number two, 312 degrees. So this one, what I would do is I would start along the positive x-axis. That's what we call our initial ray, where it initiates or starts. It's a positive angle, so we're going to go counterclockwise. And 312, let's see, that's going to take us to 90, 180, 270, plus another 42 degrees, so right about there approximately. And then we're going to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, okay, a right angle. Whatever that angle now is, in between this terminal ray and the x-axis, that's going to be our reference angle. And you can see it's going to take another 48 degrees to get to that x-axis. So that's going to be our reference angle. Okay, for number three now, another radian one, we have 25 pi over 4. What's the reference angle on that one? Well, again, notice we have an improper fraction. So I would say 4 goes into 25 six whole times with one left over. So that's 6 and 1 fourth pi. Remember, pi is 180, so we start over here along the positive x-axis. We go uh, 180, or pi, then we go 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 
6 pi. This would put us at 7 pi, but we're just going 1 fourth of pi, so like a quarter of the way. That's our terminal ray. Now remember, wherever we end up, it doesn't matter how many times we go around or what direction, wherever we end up, we always want to drop a perpendicular to our x-axis. And then we look at that reference angle, that angle in between the terminal ray and the x-axis. In this case, you can see it's going to be 1 fourth pi, which you can write as pi over 4. This is understood to be a 1 in front, so 1 pi over 4. Remember, it's always positive, and it's always between 0 and pi over 2 if you're in radians, or 0 and 90 if you're in degrees. So let's look at a number 4 now. What do you think for this one, 100 degrees? So if I was going to do this problem, I would start over here along the positive x-axis. I would rotate 90 degrees, which is a right angle, plus 10 more degrees would bring us to 100 degrees. Show the direction that we're traveling here. And then wherever you end up, you want to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, and you look at that angle between the terminal ray and the x-axis, and that's our reference angle. In this case, you can see it's going to take us 80 degrees more to get to that x-axis. So 80 degrees is going to be our reference angle, and you got it. So the next step is to use these reference angles to help us to find the values of trig functions at multiples of 30, 45, 60, or in degrees it would be pi over 3 and pi over 4 and pi over 6, those ones. So let's go ahead and uh, follow me to that video right there, Mastering the Unit Circle, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over there.